The movie begins in 370 BC in China. The Zhao nation is one of the biggest out of the seven. They dispatch 10,000 warriors to invade other nations. Commander Xiang leads the Zhao nation, and they will attack the Yan nation, the Liang kingdom, specifically. The Liang kingdom is so tiny, and they need help from Mozi warriors, but no one has arrived yet, until one day. A Mozi warrior named Ji Li walks alone in the middle of an endless desert and is guarded by the Liang warriors. Nobody expects someone from Mozi to arrive that day because they already lose hope and are ready to surrender to Zhao. Ji Li is surprised by how Liang plans to retreat and give in to their enemies, and he tries to convince the prince about their decision. Ji Li explains that they are letting their people be slaves and be defeated. They need to fight, even if they know they will die. Meanwhile, Zhao warriors discover that a Mozi warrior has come to the Liang kingdom. They know that every Mozi warrior is intelligent and will win the war. They are best at using tactics and strategies. The Zayas retreat and plan for their next move. They think of poisoning Liang instead. They want to do it through the water source of Liang in a nearby stream. However, in Liang, the soldiers are happy to see Zhao retreat and quickly send the news to the king. The prince and Ji Li talk about their next plans, becoming friends and good companions. Even though the Liang kingdom is hesitant about what Ji Li can do, he has never won a battle. At night, the prince allows Ji Li to rest, but for others, it's unfair. The cavalry chief Yi Yue disagrees with this idea, and she believes that Ji Li is supposed to look after them, not the other way around. Even the royal tutor talks to the king, and he suggests they should not trust their lives to Ji Li. He wants Ji Li to get arrested because he didn't bring the jade pendant he should have carried. The king orders Ji Li to go to the main hall the next day. The following morning, Ji Li goes to the main hall, and all the kingdom's officials are there. The king asks Ji Li how he will protect the Liang kingdom, and Ji Li answers with what is in his mind. He convinces the king and everyone there that they need to fight, not just surrender their lives like nothing. Ji Li believed in what the Liang kingdom could do. Ji Li walks out, and every soldier points their swords at him. They all wait for the king's order to arrest and kill him. But the king realizes Ji Li is right, and he gives him all the rights and power to command the soldiers in the battle. All of them are shocked by this abrupt decision, but they obey the king. Then, Ji Li immediately starts to gather every soldier in one room, and he teaches them all the strategies. He knows the Zayas plan to poison them through water, so they need to make a bulwark. Other soldiers are against this because it will take time to build a bulwark the size of Ji Li's plans. That's why Ji Li asks for the participation of everyone in the kingdom to make the bulwark as soon as possible. Perhaps by making arguments and complaints against Ji Li, all civilians gladly help because they want to end the war. They are tired of running away from their homeland and always being scared. But every time they choose to do the right thing, it comes with a cost. There are runaways from the Liang kingdom, and they are the civilians who escape their nation and try to flee. One day, the runaways are sleeping in the deep part of the desert, and they hear noises. All of them wake up, then one of the guys tries to check out who's in there, and it's Zhao. The guy commands everyone to be quiet, but his newborn son is crying. His wife can't stop the baby's crying, so the guy takes his son and puts his hand above the baby's face. The crying stops until the wife discovers that the baby has already died. She now cries loudly until one of the Zhao soldiers finds them and kills everyone except all the household fathers. Zhao takes four men with them and imprisons them. Meanwhile, in Liang, the prince and general Zi Tone fight an archery battle on who will be the one to take in bowing the Zhao. The prince goes first, and he hits the bullseye. He says that if he wins, he will ensure that Zi Tone will be imprisoned and kicked out of the battle. During Zi Tone's turn, he hits the target, and the wood gets stricken and breaks apart. Everyone is shocked, and Ji Li chooses Zi Tone to lead the archery on the battlefield. On the other hand, the Liang prisoners in Zhao are being beaten up and interrogated by the soldiers. They confess that a Mozi warrior comes to their nation and leads the battle. Zhao feels thrilled to know that it only takes one person to persuade the 4,000 people of Liang. After that confession, they return the prisoners to Liang and tell them what they did. The next day, Ji Li leaves the Liang gates and roams alone until he reaches the top of the hill, where a Zhao officer is waiting for him. Commander Xiang plays a board game with him while their troops are waiting on each side. They finish the game and say their goodbyes to each other as they promise to see themselves on the battlefield. That same night, the Liang king decides to give everything to Ji Li, including all the general's power and rights to make a command. The king trusted his life with Ji Li, and he didn't disappoint the king. Ji Li meets with the warriors that night and assigns them their positions and roles, then Yi Yue, the cavalry chief, talks to him. She asks Ji Li for their role as the cavalry team, but he only answers her to protect the royal family at all costs. Ji Li gathers everyone in the plaza and encourages them to fight for tomorrow's battle. 
The following day, Liang wakes up with a very thrilling morning. They eat battle for breakfast. The Zhao nation, with 5,000, is outside their kingdom and attacks them. The enemy's soldiers arrow the fortified walls at first before attacking them. Little do they not know that the Liangs already know their tactics. As the Zaya slowly approach the wall, Liang prepares their sulfur and throws it to the Zhao soldiers. They all cough, and even the horses lose their breath. Zhao is surprised and tries to attack another gate, and they keep bombarding the gates of Liang until they reach inside. They kill all the civilians they will pass by, but the civilians fight back. Others keep throwing massive stones to stop the soldiers from climbing up the wall. Until Ji Li decides to tame a risk, he sees that the soldier tasked with pulling the bulwark's rope dies. He takes place and pulls the rope until the bulwark explodes and kills every Zhao soldier. Ji Li gets injured, but he's fine and well. Ji Li kills General Gao of Zhao, and Zhao retreats from the battle. Yi Yue looks after Ji Li after he gets injured. When he wakes up, Yi Yue gives him an armor gift as a token of appreciation. But Ji Li refuses to take it because he doesn't want anyone to think that a Mozi warrior accepts a gift in return for service. He goes outside instead and is dissatisfied with what he sees. There are dead bodies everywhere, and innocent people die just because of wanting peace, that's not what he wanted. On the other hand, Zhao wants revenge for General Gao's death. They are in deep sorrow and guilt because they underestimated their enemies, and Commander Xiang is furious at the Liangs. Back in Liang, the four prisoners want to kill Ji Li because they believe they have lost more lives since he arrived in the kingdom. When they are helping other people to bury the dead, Pu Le takes the knife with poison and tries to chase Ji Li. But Ji Li fights against him, and Pu Le accidentally stabs himself, leading to his instantaneous death. Ji Li can't believe what just happened and feels unappreciated for his sacrifice for Liang. Ji Li gathers everyone and takes time to mourn for Pu Le. When they meditate, they find out who the spy is. The girl gets shocked and tries to defend herself, but he runs after Ji Li and tries to kill him. That's when the people kill her by beating her. Ji Li returns to his room and finds Yi Yue still there, and he clarifies that he doesn't want to accept gifts. Ji Li wears a costume that is weird for him. During the night, Yi Yue dresses up the same and looks for Ji Li in the deep forest. Then he grabs her and asks what she's doing. Yi Yue wants to go with Ji Li. They go to Zhao's campsite and see they are building tunnels straight to Liang. They are also expanding the stream to cover up their plan. Suddenly, one soldier sees them and chases them. When they reach the cliff, Ji Li and Yi Yue jump off, and Yi Yue drowns. Fortunately, Ji Li saves her. Ji Li and Yi Yue go back to the Liang kingdom to let the others know what they see, they are trying to hear from below if there are sounds from the tunnel. Conversely, Zhao conducts a meeting on how they will attack through the tunnels, and they want an act of successful revenge this time. One night, Zhao soldiers successfully entered Liang using the tunnel. Then they see Ji Li standing alone on the wall, and they think he is alone, but suddenly he calls out to everyone. When the Zayas try to move more, traps are everywhere, and even the tunnel is on fire. Commander Xiang is surprised again by this unexpected move. Another battle starts, Zayas versus Liangs. They kill each other endlessly, even the slaves try to protect themselves, and innocent kids get involved. One Zhao slave gets Xiao Xiao, a young girl, as a hostage. Ji Li stops him and convinces him not to kill the kid, and he agrees. The other civilians try to kill Zhao's slave after that, but Ji Li keeps him alive and frees him. After an endless and nonsense battle, the Zhao retreat again, and they don't want to sacrifice more men. The Zhao slaves left in the Liang kingdom were free, and many more civilians died. That's when other Liang officials set up a meeting against Ji Li. Meanwhile, Yi Yue tries to comfort Ji Li in the room where he stays because he feels guilty about the death of many innocent people. Yi Yue assures him it's not his fault, and she starts sedating him, but it doesn't work. Before Yi Yue leaves Ji Li, she confesses her feelings. After the second battle, everyone is preparing for the winter, and they are still going. The royal tutor suggests to the king to exile Ji Li because he now gains popularity over the king, and he might overtake the position of the king someday. Others refuse this idea because Ji Li brings victory for Liang. They continue their meeting and convince the king. However, Zhao is left with only a thousand soldiers, some want to surrender, but Commander Xiang says they need to continue their battle. They want to take an act of revenge and win a victory over Liang. Back in Liang, the prince and Ji Li have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. The prince warns Ji Li about the popularity he has gained among the civilians. The next day, the Liang soldiers arrest Ji Li and want to kill him. But instead, the prince enters the gate and fights Ji Li with the sword. They throw him out of the kingdom and his other followers too. The prince chased Ji Li outside the kingdom, and everything was staged. 
but General Nu still commands everyone to arrow them, and the civilians die, including the prince. After searching for the bodies, Ji Li isn't there. The king finds out that his only son is killed by his own men, he wants to kill General Nu, but he's the only one he has left, so he keeps him alive. Ji Li is kept accompanied by the Zhao slave he freed, and they are taking a rest in the deep forest while everyone in Liang is in danger. Anyone who believes in Ji Li will be considered a rebel and exiled. Some of them get execution as a punishment, and Yi Yue receives muting as her punishment. The exiled group includes Zi Tone, and he is very disappointed because he has been faithful to Liang but feels betrayed. So when they meet with Ji Li, the now considered rebels fight against Liang too. Zhao attacks Liang for the third time, and they outnumber every soldier. The king regrets betraying and kicking out Ji Li because he lost everything. While Liang's and Zhao's soldiers are fighting one another, the Zhao slave blows up the tunnel below, and the water for the bulwark explodes. It kills hundreds of people, especially soldiers from both nations. Ji Li tries to find Yi Yue, who has been handcuffed and left to die in one of the dungeons. When he finds her, she's already drowned and dead. This is the first time Ji Li takes the courage to love and be loved, but his heart gets broken immediately. The movie ends with survivors of the battle, regardless of what nation they came from. They are all walking away from the battlefield, alone and full of heartache from the nonsense war. Ji Li takes some children with him, hoping for a better future ahead of them. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.